You know, gathering in a spot like this, you've got to multitask, for lack of a better term. I'm looking at all of it, not just this cattail up here I'm about to gather, but I'm thinking, is there, are there any clams in the water? How about that yellow pond lily? Is it ripe and ready for the seed popping? Things like that. This is, this is just so much to choose from here. That's how I really want to do it. I don't want to pull up the root system. I just want to get it just like that. Now, at one point, I'd actually introduced Chef Paul to the broadleaf cattail. These are narrowleaf cattails, and they're going to be in different stages at different times of the year because we're much further north than the broadleaf cattail that I'd originally shown him at one, at one time. So you're in one area thinking, ah, oh, too late, missed the season. You drive a couple of hours, and a different variety of the same plant is actually perfectly in season. It's these kind of thick uh, transitional zones, especially transitioning from the forest into water, where the variety of plants picks up immeasurably. So you, you're back up in the trees, and you might have six things. You come down a little bit lower in elevation, you get towards a swamp, you get into this transition zone, and now you're looking at 31 different plants that you can harvest. So these areas are always great places to be. I love coming to swamps for that reason. And case in point, look at this, right there. Isn't that beautiful? These little cedar buds are gonna go home as well. Oh my gosh, that's delicious smelling. Paul is rich with aromatic wild edibles for this meal. I'm excited to bring all of this back to him. As always for harvesting, you've got to do it ethically. For me, it's like pick one, leave one, pick one, leave one. There's a lot of willow here. I generally pick willow to make tea out of it. It's actually really good if you have a headache. And my advice or my suggestion will be to use it for smoking and getting a nice smoky flavor into the food. He may want to do something else with it or he may not want to use it at all. And if he doesn't want to use it, I'll make some tea. Go down to the base, keeping the left hand up and just a nice slice down into the plant and it comes off smoothly. Now, if I were to take this same and try to cut like this, try to cut straight, straight into it, it's a lot harder and you're a lot more open to having a bad accident. All right, I don't want you to get the wrong idea about gathering wild edibles. I am a huge fan of finding wonderful plants right in the middle of cities. They can be safe to eat, not sprayed by pesticides, they can be delicious and it could be a great place to gather. However, you do have to think it through. I'm actually at a boat ramp right now and there's some late season clover here. I would love to pick this and bring it back to Paul. I'm not gonna gather from here because you have to think it through here now. People come here to launch their boats. What do you do just before you get in a boat? That's right. You go to the woods and you relieve yourself, you hop in the boat and you go. Well, it's very possible that any number of people could have relieved themselves right here before getting in their boats and that's why I'm not gonna gather my wild edibles in a spot like this. I think I can find some better clover elsewhere. See, the weather breaks and the wildlife comes out. Paul is going to love this. Ah, oh, it's a beauty. In the words of a very good friend of mine, we got dinner. <laughs> well, you know what goes really well with grouse? 
rose hip. And this is a beautiful bush of rose hip. What I like about this season is some of the hips themselves will be hard and can be used one way, and some of the hips will be soft. And when they're soft, ah, you can eat them right away. Oh yeah, grouse and rose hips. Let's see if Paul can deal with that. Fruits like this, berries that this time of year, right after an overnight frost, they sweeten right up, they soften, in the case of rose hips, and in other berry situations, like say, um, like a high bush cranberry or mountain ash, they sweeten after the evening frost. So you really wanna have some patience and wait for that frost to hit. Now, I know it seems like I am able to get out to a lot of great remote locations to find these wild edibles. There's just tons of rose hips here. But in fact, I'm a short drive down a dirt road and I'm right at the edge of the road. Kevin, show them the road. I easily could have canceled my wild harvesting today because this morning was, it was raining, everything was gray. Uh, I knew that I would come out here and I'd be having to wear my jackets and I would get wet and it would be muddy, but I went for it anyway because I know that the forest is beautiful no matter what the weather is. You know the only difference between whether or not you're comfortable in the wilderness or not? Good clothing, that's it. Okay, quick little morning grab here for Chef Paul. I do like to grab the uh, red clover whenever I want it for a meal. Uh, first thing in the, in the day, in the morning. Clover is a plant just rich in vitamins. And while Paul continues to set up the camp, I've got one other little ingredient I want to have available for him. This little guy will do. Oh man, there's nothing that invokes the feeling of the Canadian North, like the smell of spruce. This should be perfect for them. Well, one way or the other, Paul has to set up camp, and you would think that a lot of these river rocks would be perfect for that. Not so. In fact, it's very dangerous to use river rocks as liners for your fire pit. River rocks, you see, are washed over by water all the time, and the water actually penetrates the rock, leaving microscopic amounts of water in the rock. You put that rock in your fire pit, the water expands and the rock explodes potentially in your face. I've seen this happen. Uh, we're not going to be using river rocks to make our fire pit today. All right, a little bit of camp craft. Most people who camp anyway are familiar with the fact that this birch bark from the white birch tree is fantastic for starting a fire. It's just filled with oils, it lights up right away. My pet peeve in this situation is showing up at a beautiful campground and seeing gorgeous live white birch trees standing tall, looking great, with a strip ripped off right around the entire tree. This is the birch tree you want to gather from, the one that is dead and laying on the ground. There are as many ways to pluck a bird as there are opinions. And then the other opinion is when to pluck the bird. I have friends that will say, you've got to pluck the bird immediately, as soon as you get it. Oh, it's much easier. And other people will say, no, 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 let it sit overnight. It's much easier. So you have to figure it out for yourself. Grouse are the most difficult bird to pluck. If you just go in and start ripping out feathers, you just rip the skin off. So I want to save the skin. Here's the thing about processing your own wild harvest just out in nature. It's incredibly calming. I mean, I'm forced to sit here for what's going to take me about maybe half an hour if I'm nice and calm and just breathing in the air, looking out at the river 
watching my partner get his cookery all set up, and it's incredibly relaxing. It's just calming to the spirit. This is one of those chances that I get to try a plant that I've always known about. It's been around me, and I've never made use of it. This is tall blue lettuce. The wild lettuces are ubiquitous. They're all over the place. Is it edible? This one has a strong bitter component at this stage of the game. I'm a bit late in the season, but what I think I'd like to do with this is present Paul the challenge of working with a bitter. Most wild edibles are quite delicate, so when you pick, there's a good chance they're going to wilt even on the way home. So you want to be careful. You want to have somewhere cool to put the plants. Or even better, you want to pick the plants and then go right into the kitchen with them. In this situation, I'm going to pick the lettuce leaves, take them to Paul so he can see what he has to work with, but I'm going to leave the majority of these and come back tomorrow, pick them when he's ready to use them in the kitchen. All right, there's lots of it around here. This is tall blue lettuce. One more plant to go.